What's going on YouTube? It's been a while since I made one of these personal videos, but I've been waiting been waiting to do this video because I've been holding on to this for a while. Now most of you guys who actually watch the personal stuff know that I had started dating. A while back ago, about seven months ago, I restarted. And things was okay at the beginning. There was some interference from the outside that pretty much eliminated me and the girl. I'm not calling names, I'm not gonna name drop. I ain't gonna share it on Facebook either because some of her relatives are over there on my Facebook. But, it started off smooth, like I said. There was some outside interference which kept us from uh, forming a bond as well as an ex who was allowed to come around anytime some shit went down whether it was verbally between well yeah because it was always verbally but anytime some shit went down I was the one to get tossed out hey don't come back to my place that's what would happen because that individual's um, so and so I'm not going to even say the so and so but that person in 0.1 mile turn left Sorry about that, I'm heading out somewhere, and I'll tell you that in a little bit. But that person was interfering, and that was their house that I was not allowed to go to to see my own girl. But that being said, and yeah, I'm, I'm in kind of one of those moves today, and I might sound a little bit like one of my YouTube heroes, Tommy Sotomayor, ripping into black women. But with black women, he just, he, he made a, a good statement about how the thugs and the felons always get the pussy first. This girl had already had three kids. The first two, the dad was I. Right. The second one, second baby dad, the first two are by the same guy. The other one, the last one is by one dude. That basically, if she wants to, she might as well go back to him after what she did today or oh, a few days ago. Turn left. GPS trying to take me all out of uh, all out of way. But the thug gets the pussy first all the time. This is a dude that used to beat her ass, mind you. And I've told you before, my now ex-girlfriend, as of about 20 minutes ago, ex-girlfriend, and it's staying that way. You'll understand why. In one mile, turn left. I'm really getting tired of that, but I gotta keep it on. This guy here, kicked out of the military, used to beat her ass, cheat on her, with a tranny, I might add. Um, gave her a curable STD. Thank goodness it was curable. And this is the guy where we'd be on the phone. I used to do this and that for him and that and that. And he'd get mad. In a quarter of a mile. And turn left. He'd get mad and slap me. Right in front of my children. He didn't give a fuck. The reason they broke up is because he tied her up. At least that's what she said. He tied her up and beat her. He's kicking her in the back. So. Turn left. Anyway. Over the last few months where things have been hell. He and I had some words to say to each other. And through that was some threats. Now after a while. And especially with me getting a little bit smarter with the law. I decided, well, it's time to start making a paper trail. So I did. Reported him. Ex-girlfriend on the phone with us when the threats was being made. And when made my report like I'm supposed to. Got the case number. Still here just in case. Still got still got that. Just in case. And um uh, this bitch get on the phone 
Let me, let me tell you what she said. Because um, actually Monday was the day that I was leaving her. Now I'm basically just getting fed up with it. Uh, Tommy was talking about something where he was with a girl and she didn't want to give him no time. But yet she complained that the guy that she was with, who was a thug, a felon, she was begging him to spend time with her. Now me and this girl here, even though I wasn't supposed to be, you know, at you know, her place because the person who owned the place didn't want me there. We might sneak around, but she made like zero effort to hardly spend any time with me, and I've been getting on her ass about it. Then lately, the calls, the texts, and all that stuff start getting slower and slower, less and less. And I confronted her about it. I'm like, I don't hardly see you. Now you're not replying. Like, hey, all I do on the weekend is miss you. This, that, and other. I can't do it anymore. So she messaged me back. She's like, well, whether we together or not, we got to stick together. Remember, I, I spoke up for you on that report that we did. Fast forward to today, and I'm down there at uh, the hospital. Kid got sick, and I was about to drop a little change on her, and she was going to meet me downstairs. So, while I'm downstairs, I get a call from HPD. And they told me what she said for her side of the story. Oh no, we weren't dating and her baby dad never threatened me. Uh-huh. It's a good buddy of mine said you give a person enough rope, they'll hang themselves. And I've actually been in observation mode for like over a month. I'll let her say this, that, and the other, and I'll be like, uh-huh, yeah. And I wouldn't treat her any different purposely. I would still give her that A1 treatment because I'm going to leave a lasting impression with her. Damn, look at what I had versus what I'm going to go back to. Look at what my children could have had versus what we're going to go back to. And that's me getting my ass kicked in front of them. So, gave her enough rope, stayed in observation mode, and like I said, in the black community, it's always the thugs getting the pussy first. Always. I don't know why it is that a nice guy like me, without any criminal background, uh, with a job, make half-ass decent money. And I tell you what, I don't really if you if you put it in the median income of, of, of things, then really don't make shit because the the median household income is a little over forty a year. I make around thirty, so. Me, single dad, that's about all I make, at least now. But doing that report, you know, we did have a face-to-face -face confrontation, me and the guy, sort of. But I was a bit smart, trying to avoid this, that, and other, use the law to my advantage. I'd already went down, filed the report, like I'm supposed to, and he tried to bait me to get out of the car to fight him. Now what do I look like <clears throat> fighting over some shit, over some shit that uh, didn't happen? Oh, and the supposed thing that happened was that this baby dad, I was supposedly playing on his girlfriend's phone, which I forwarded him my phone records to let him know, hey, you can look at this here and see I hadn't been calling you, bitch. So there you go. So after about two weeks of that, he still want to start some shit, and there you have it. Oh, and by the way, the ex-girlfriend, as of today, told uh, the police department that I was playing on the phone. So as suspected all along, and with the little signs that come back and forth, like, hey, that's kind of strange. You want me to post you on Facebook, but yet at the same time, you won't post me at all. Okay, we'll play your game. Just observe. Dudes, observe these women that you are with because these hood ass women, 90% of them ain't no good. Just about all of them ain't no good. Don't date them, don't fuck with them. Me? 
I'm going Mexican or white. Either one. That's fine with me. But there is one more. And I can't name drop on here. There is one more black chick that I am sort of interested in. But I'm going to still leave that be. Because. Um, just, just leave it be just because. And. Uh, if she actually watches the video. 37. She's kind of cute. Seem to be in a lot of the same stuff. But. Um. Like I said, I'ma just leave that be. And um, just start slow. So it's amazing how quick these women can turn their back on you while smiling in your face or telling you this, that, and the other. Because it's about 30% of what you actually say versus 70% of your actions. This goes to the women too. Don't get so caught up in what a person actually says. Watch their actions. I say that because a lot of you women get in these relationships with these dudes that are not spending any time with you. They make all these excuses until it's something that they want and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, they're available. Yeah, they're free. And it was the same thing with her. One of the things that actually put me on the observation mode was, uh, well, I had already been on it, you know, already been on it. But one of the things that really threw me into 100% observation mode where my feelings just- Heavy traffic reported ahead. Just went, where I let them go out the window, she had got sick and had to go to the hospital. So I had, my kids, my two boys, her three kids. Also, her two nephews. All packed in this little car. Took care of them all day, all night. Got ready to spend the night with her in the hospital. And she got released. Well, from that point on, during the week, I knew she was still sick. I didn't get to see her. And she said she was sick the weekend. Her cycle came, which it came during the middle of the week. So look, I'm gonna just sit at home all weekend. I don't wanna be bothered. You don't wanna be bothered. I need to come and pamper on you because that's the type of guy I am. <clears throat> all of a sudden, I get a text message while I'm at work. Hey, I'm at so-and-so house. I'm gonna spend the weekend over there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, bitch. You just said that you're gonna spend the weekend to yourself. Now, I've been asking to spend time with you and you're going to go to so-and-so's house for the weekend. You're gonna go to her house for the weekend, really? Then turned around, went to the movies the same night, went to the movies again the following night, and then on the Sunday, Went out again the whole weekend. I'm sitting in my room like this motherfucking bitch. I've done all that and this bitch couldn't spend any time with me. It's obviously I went after the pussy because she was on the rag. Now, observation mode. You're watching everything they do and everything that they say. And you're taking everything that they say with a grain of salt because you're looking to see what they're going to actually do. From that point, anytime on, when I wanted to spend time with her, that was an excuse, unless she wanted something. Check that as a mental note. Hmm. So she wanted this here, but she was able to come and get it. But when I said, hey, won't we meet up for a little bit? It seemed to be, oh, I can't get a ride. Or, I don't have anybody to watch the kids. But yet, you're going out almost every single day. And this is during the week too. You gotta remember right now it's summertime. So, she's going out during the week. And her dude is saying, hey, I think we should spend some time together. I think so too, but I'm gonna go this day. Observation mode. You keep that shit mentally locked. 
See, these black bitches, they know how to argue real good. They can hold some shit against you. White women do it, too. All women do that shit, too. You'll say something three years ago, and they'll bring it up today. Like it's fresh. Like, you remember what the hell you said three years ago. And whoop your ass with it, too. They don't give a fuck. Remember you said my sister was hot three years ago? No, I don't. What the hell are you talking about? See, that's why I don't trust your ass now and be shaking the head at you and shit. That's what they do. <clears throat> so, observation mode, observation mode, observation mode. Be in observation mode when you dating these chicks. And this here chick, to be quite honest with you, this is a girl I wouldn't even date it had I not known her for as many years as I have. I've known her for 18 years. So I've known her that long, which is why I even gave her a shot in the first place. So you, black woman, you're gonna take your friendship, which we've always had a good friendship, you're gonna take that, throw it away, for this thug who used to whoop your ass in front of your children, cheat on you with trannies, and spend up the house money. You're going to literally sit there and take his side on this here. It's not just taking his side, it's basically lying because, and if the investigation got really, 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 really deep, they could actually pull up these damn calls, but they'll never do it, which I don't blame them. It's a waste of tax dollars to do it. But all that stuff is recorded. It's on file. Remember the Patriots Act, nigga? The Patriots Act. They has all of that shit. All of that shit is recorded and can be retrieved. So you went and you lied on me, on your own dude. A dude you've been knowing way before you've been knowing this dude. A dude, me, who's never done anything foul to you over a baby daddy who over three years whooped your ass and tried to bound you to do it again. Another thing that put me on observation mode, she was always, I'm going to be going down to child support on him. I'm going down to child support on him. I'm going down. You've been saying that. This girl had been saying that for months. Literally has been to the child support office for the other baby dad And never said shit about the current baby dad So I'm gonna make a wager I'll do something silly. I don't know I'll crack three eggs over my head if within the next Two months that her and the baby dad are back together Let's just do that in other news, it was a good incident because I'm getting ready to move out. And uh, I do need to be able to protect my kids. Uh, with me on my strict tight budget, I'm gonna need to carry. And uh, I need to carry legit. Now I'm not gonna lie, when he was trying to bait me out of the vehicle, there were a few times where I thought about getting out. And then the other part of me is like, don't do it, because this is a trap. If you engage him, something bad is going to happen. Well, come to find out today, there would have been three charges had I engaged this guy into a physical fight. Also, I don't know what the fuck she was telling him either. Which, <clears throat> the way she took his side to the cops, after he made the threats that he made, there's no telling what the fuck she was telling this guy. So, after that, I decided I'm gonna be legit. And we're gonna be legit, like I said. Moving out, I got my kids to protect, just me and the boys. And unfortunately, you know, when you're living on a limited budget like that, in one mile, turn right. You have to be tight. And a lot of the cheap apartments are in bad areas. So when I go and pick my children up at night from my parents' house getting off of work, I'm gonna wanna carry. And for y'all who don't have backgrounds, 
I believe that'll be good for you guys too because your safety, your family's safety, all that's important. Again, if I would have gotten to that, um, a battle with this guy here, that would have been three charges. For one, um, assault, because I put myself in a situation when I got out of the car. That's one thing that uh, I was told. So I would have gotten assault charge and so would he. Uh, disorderly conduct. We were on public property. That would have been another charge. And because it was new boyfriend versus old boyfriend, it would have been a domestic dispute. Also, no CHL. That could have been another charge. Also, had he seen this right here, that could have been another charge, aggravated assault. You dudes out there fighting in the street, stop it, because you can lose everything over a nigger. Oh, excuse me, over a nigger or a niggeress. You can lose everything. That battle right there, I would have lost my job. I would have had a criminal background, which would have prevented me from getting jobs that I can actually get right now, like working with the public. It would have fucked me up really bad over some ignorant shit. So use your heads when you're out there. Start packing legally. And you should be all right. Don't go out there and... and Try to be some superhero because you're not. Study the law, use it, be safe, be careful, take care of your folks, your family, and love them. Anyways, you too, peace out. Like I said, been waking, waiting to make that. Later.